Good morning to all of you. Today I am going to discuss global status of robotic surgery. And uh, in this we will discuss the past, present and the future of robotic surgery. After that we will have lunch. After lunch we, I will take all of you to the robotic OT and I will demonstrate you the Da Vinci robot, how it works, what are the surgeon console, what is the patient side card, what is the vision card and each and every part of the robot we will discuss technology behind the robot and what are the different buttons and how to do docking and how to do the different patient position for different surgery. After that we will have a class for gynecologist for cervical circlas. By the time surgeons will do hands on on the robot and then we will have class for the surgeon and gynae will have hands on. So this way we will go today. So first starting with a lecture of global status of robotic surgery. This robo word was coined by Carol Capic. Carol Capic was a very popular Czech Republic writer. He was a novel writer. He used to write the sci-fi novel. In the, his novel, first time in the world, he was writing for the universe, multiverse, going to the other planet, astronomers like fiction. Once upon a time, and his novel was popular all over the world, people were reading it a lot. So once upon a time, he was writing a novel and he wanted to coin a artificial human. That human will go to the another planet and fight with the aliens like that his was in his mind. And he wanted to coin a new term for that, new word for that. That's artificial human. And his brother suggested the name Robo. You know, word Robo in Czech language means forced labor. Forced labor, like a slave in this language. So he has suggested the name Robo for that. Based upon that, one movie came in 1926. The name of the movie was Metropolis. This movie was very popular all over the world and this is the artificial human and he has made it. This movie is still present on the YouTube. This is a scene of this movie. Of course it was a silent movie, only musics were there because in 1926 audio movie we are not there and of course black and white movie this is a scientist in that movie who is inventing a robo first time in the world before that people were not knowing what is the meaning of robo and this is the robo which this scientist has invented. And it is very interesting that first robo of the world was a lady robo. <laughs> and she fought with all the aliens who were trying to capture this earth. And she killed all the aliens. That's why we are alive. Otherwise, we would have <laughs> lost our life. So this was the concept of this movie. Now based upon the same concept, US military has invented a robo. And their idea was that it should go to the battlefield and it should fight with the uh, enemies also. And if someone is victim of the war, needs surgery, so it will do surgery also. This was the idea of US military. And they invented one robot and they have given the name Da Vinci. 
Davinci name was given on the great Leonardo da Vinci. But once they invented this robo, then it was found that it is only a master slave manipulator. It is not a real robo. It was just a master slave manipulator. So your robo was the slave and you are the master. And it is basically translating the movement of your hand inside the abdomen. It doesn't do anything its own. So whatever you will move outside, it will translate inside the abdomen. So it is not a real robo. Real robo means it should do something its own. You should tell the robo that go and perform the surgery. And robo should go and do appendectomy, coming back and telling you that, Madam, sir, task is complete, I did it. But there is nothing like that. So it is basically just a manipulator. Till last year. As you know that last year, in February 2022, the robot started performing laparoscopic surgery without human help. And that was the bowel anastomosis in animal. And they did beautiful hand shaven bowel anastomosis, first time in the world. So maybe in the future, the new generation robot will perform the surgery without the help of the human. But till now, it is just a master slave manipulator. Now, as soon as the intuitive surgical uh, Da Vinci robot was invented by the US military, then they saw that it is not going to work in the battlefield because it is not a robot, it's just a master slave manipulator. And surgeon is already required there to move the hand and then it will translate in the abdomen. So they thought that in military it is of no use, so let us sell it into the commercial market. And in 2000, they sold it to Intuitive Surgical. But as soon as Intuitive Surgical has sold the one first robo in Harvard Medical School, Boston, USA, then eight lawsuits were filed against the Intuitive Surgical by one company that was the name Mo Computer Motion. And Computer Motion was already selling a GS robot there. It was basically a German technology. So the Computer Motion filed case against the Intuitive Surgical that whatever you are selling by a name of this Da Vinci is actually our product. It is just a cheating, just a copy. No one has invented, no US military, no nothing. This is just a fraud. And then eight lawsuits were filed against the intensive surgical. From year 2000 to 2003, both computer motion and intensive surgical were fighting in the court. And court has given that nobody can sell any robo till the decision will be taken. Now intensive surgical was going to be bankrupt. Now intensive surgical approached US military that we want to our money back. Because if anything is wrong, then we are not the real inventor. We have purchased from you. And now you are, we are in trouble, so we don't want to buy. After that, ultimately, on the government level, high level, compromise was done, and some money was given, offered to the computer motion, and GS robot was phased out. And computer motion and intuitive surgical merged together into a single company. From year 2000, up to 2020, there was only one US FDA approved robo, and that was Da Vinci. Still, intuitive surgical is world leader. So, this is how this company started with the litigation, and still it is world leader. First Da Vinci prototype was very crude technology. It was having only two arm. This is two arm and a metal frame and uh, very crude uh, standard definition technology. After that, they developed three arm. After that, they developed four arm. After that, this is 4K and this is the, now today 
you have a complete modular design with the complete four arm Da Vinci robot. First transatlantic minimal access surgery was also started in September 7, 2001 from New York to Strasbourg. Here surgeon is operating in New York and his movement is translated by the robot in Strasbourg, France, thousands of miles away. This is a college hysterectomy surgery. You can see this is the cystic pedicle. This is left instrument, this is right instrument here separating the peritoneum and same image is transferred thousands of miles away. Only difference of this image and this image is this is little close up and this is little panoramic and this is little close up. No need to wear any cap, any mask, no gloves. These are called master manipulated and your movement of the hand will be translated thousands of miles away. That is called globalization of surgery. Other surgeons are, they are useless, waiting for something to go wrong. Otherwise, if internet connection is stopped, then only they will participate. Globalization of surgery is a reality. Ten years from now, all of you will start doing robotic surgery. There is no any doubt in that. Why? We will learn in the latter lecture, latter slides I will tell you. Telesurgery right now is not a reality because of time lag. Today the problem is that we are working on fiber optic technology and even if you are attaching at some website in America, France, Italy, Germany then your internet signals are not going directly through the satellite, it is going through the mechanically by fiber, fiber optics. If you will see on the Google and if you will type fiber optic network in oceans, then you will see millions and millions of dollar is invested. See, these all are fibers. These all are fibers. These all are fibers. These all are fibers. These people are putting fibers. These are fibers. Millions and millions of dollars is invested. These are all fibers by the company to put fiber in the ocean. These all are fibers. And this is the fiber network, see, this is the fiber, how internet travel across ocean. Millions and millions of dollars they have put fiber from one country to another country to another country like that. You know, some fibers are so big that it is the size of this room. And this has a small, a small, just same fiber optic which is in our light cable. Light cable also has fiber optic. So this is fiber optic network how the internet across the world is going. Now, this fiber has a problem that it has a time lag. Why time lag is there? Because one fiber to the other fiber is connected by the computer. Like one fiber cannot be one single fiber from here to America. It has different nodes and in between these nodes, there are computer, big computers and this you can find out how you will put in your computer CMD, CMD means command prompt, this is called CMD. After that type T-R-A-C-E-R-T, -E that is called trace route and then type any website like sagej.org and then enter. Now it is tracing the route of Society of American Gastrointestinal Endoscopic Surgeon. And these are the, this is the IP of Sages. And these are the in between the computer. Do you know how it will go? It will go from our router to the Gurgaon. From Gurgaon it is going to Geo because our internet supplier is Geo. 
from here it is request time out request time out means traffic is more so it is waiting now it went to delhi from delhi it will go to chennai or in the mumbai and then it will go to singapore then it will go to london then it will go to paris then it will go to the usa and then it will go to the sages.org and these are the time lag you can see these are time lag and these are the ip address of the different computer which is and it is tracing the route and it is finding out all the all the computer which is in between you and sages so this time lag is almost 4 second and this 4 second is a big problem like if you coagulate uterine artery and if bleeding has started you will learn 4 second later and within 4 second it might get retracted and the attempt to catch the uterine artery is wrong and you can cook the ureter so it is risky it is not possible to do the this robotic surgery tele surgery two days because of these are time legacy 57 second this so ultimately here it is and you have reached 104 this is the ip address it is reached. so 10 computers are in between you and sages and these 10 computers are giving the different time lag and again returning back so this is the problem but this problem is our created problem because nowadays lifi technology is there this is called lifi this is lifi is led light uh, internet technology the in this technology what is there directly you, wherever led bulb is there you have internet you don't need modem you don't need any other technology is starlink technology in lifi you might be seeing here what is writing here it is writing that light at the speed of internet at the speed of light so it is very internet at the speed of light there is no time lag that is called lifi another technology which is very good for robotic surgery is a starlink technology this is a starlink a starlink was developed by the elon musk he has put a starlink technology in a starlink technology there is no fiber optic required he has put the satellite all around the world multiple satellites are there for every country can connect and directly your internet to be connected with the satellite directly one computer or one mobile will send the signal to satellite and from satellite that signal will come to another computer but the question is why we are not using it the problem with us is that technology which already fiber optic you have sold and given license to the company who has invested they will kill you because those investors are threatening the government that we have invested those many billions of dollar in this fiber optic and if you will bring any new technology then what will happen to our investment so you cannot bring a new technology until we recover all our profit am i right so that's why technology is there but it is inhibited because of industry industry is threatening the government that we will ask our money back and government is not in the position of giving the money back so they are tolerating it this is the problem you know russia has destroyed all the fiber optic of ukraine and all the big towers everything they have destroyed but still ukraine is surviving the russia only due to elon musk because elon musk has given the free starlink technology to ukraine and their internet is still on because you can understand in these days without internet connection can you fight a battle can you win a war not possible without communication we cannot uh, survive am i right we cannot survive so how the soldiers will survive so it is must but uh, elon musk has given the starlink technology free to them so they are still communicating and still fighting and resisting the russia after so much war so same way this technology is coming by 
24 in India already our 5G is started and 5G has only 137 millisecond delay and in by the end of this year Li-Fi or a Starlink in India also will start because Tesla already India started making and Elon Musk has already started investing here and now we will make their car that is Tesla for all over the world and that way this technology will come and make it sure that by 2030 every hospital will start doing the telesurgery. Now you do not have to go in the operation theatre, you can operate from your bedroom. You will only have a surgeon's console and uh, patient will be in the hospital or anywhere in the world. Now the question is, <coughs> sorry, will we lose our job? No, you will not lose, rather you will get more job than before. Why? Do you know, even a simple intermediate level of the surgeon can perform advanced surgery. Like today, once patient come with for radical hysterectomy right now, then you do not have any option except referring the person to the tertiary center. Am I right? Now, what you will do after robotic surgery, tele-surgery, that you can hire any surgeon from any developed country from America, from France and good thing about when the, you have a day, they have a night. So suppose you want to hire Professor Stephen D. Wexner that I want to do a low anterior resection or hemicolectomy. Then in the daytime he is busy in the hospital, he will say it is difficult, but can you give me your one hour time at night? I will give you whatever you want to money. Then he will say, okay, ready. And then two IP address of the computer will be attached and then major part of the surgery, difficult part of surgery, he will do it and rest you can do the morselation, closure of vault, you can do yourself. But major lymphadenectomy part and major part he will do it. So that way even the intermediate surgeon, even in the small places, you can have the advanced surgery. So that way referring of the patient will almost stop. Do you know when Rajiv Gandhi was one of our prime minister who has launched the a lot of internet revolution and computer revolution he did for India. At that time Indian people were very angry and many opposition started taking the you know on the road that computers should never come to country like India because it will take the job of hundreds of people, one computer will do the job of hundreds of people and all the hundred will be unimplanned, just like how the people are misunderstanding the artificial intelligence. They are saying that AI will completely destroy and take millions of jobs. It is not true. It will create more job and it actually happens. Now the computer has created maximum job in IT sector for India or for every country. So that's why telesurgery will give you more work. Don't be afraid about the robot that if robot will be there, your job will be less. You will do more work and it will do the your mentoring and proctoring. Mentoring and proctoring means robot itself will teach you to how to do surgery. Right now today computer is teaching you how to use computer. Am I right? If you do not know how to use a pen drive or how to write on the word or how to make a video editing, you are typing in the YouTube and it is teaching you that you go press this button, press this button or help. So nobody we are going to take the inter computer classes, your computer is its own teacher, same way robot will be your mentor and proctor. So it will not be only your operation tool, it will be your teacher. So that is a great technology and it should must come. Now the question is, some people are against it and they say, what is the advantage of robot? My, I am alive, I have my hand and ultimately I have to do surgery anyway. 
the robot will do its own without the help of surgeon in future but right now i have to do myself then what is the need these are the advantages first advantage that it has 3d vision laparoscopy has only 2d vision you may ask that laparoscopy is also 3d 3d laparoscopy is flop technology it could not progress 3d in the laparoscopy was launched very long back in year 2005 3d laparoscopy was launched and many people has bought the 3d camera many surgeons but within 5 year by 2010 it was flop and company just stopped making 3d camera and the company who are making 3d camera also people are not buying why the problem of laparoscopic 3d is that it decreases your performance why it decreases your performance because you are operator also and you are viewer also how 3d works 3d works in virtual 3d that same image in both the retina is at different angle you have to wear a glass am i right either glass should be in your specs or in the da vinci it is on the console but glass is there and on one a screen two, there are two images that's why if you will remove the glass you will see blurred image you will see two images have you seen the 3d two images once you wear the glass then one glass will take x polarized image and the glass will take y polarized image so one image can only into this eye enter it cannot enter in other eye other image entering in other eye so in the both the retina same image will be at different angle and that's how our we are fooling our brain and our brain started seeing 3d this is how 3d works now the problem is that once you wear the 3d polarized light and turn on the 3d screen it takes 10 second time to start viewing 3d because your eye has to be acclimatized for that because your brain get disturbed that what is this so once 10 second time you will start seeing then you will see 3d flowers are coming nearer to you water is splashing 3d and then it's okay but suddenly your nerves will give you a needle holder and now you are seeing the needle holder and you are reaching into the cannula so now your eye is distracted from the virtual 3d and now you are seeing real 3d and again you see on the screen again 10 second time to start seeing 3d and then suddenly you will check the patient that your right hand instrument is ratchet is locked or not or something again you are seeing the patient again you are seeing real 3d virtual 3d eye is distracted and that way your performance lost in robotic surgery 3d works why you are not operator throughout the surgery you are wearing the glasses or seeing inside a console because surgery is performed by robot so that 3d is useful and that 3d improves your performance in robotic in laparoscopy it doesn't improve the performance you know all the smart tv most of you must have the 3d tv all the smart tv now available in the market has 3d sony samsung lg all has 3d and once you buy a new smart tv they give you specs only few day you will enjoy it you will attach the specs and you will sit and you will see 3d movie and suddenly your son came and you see what are you doing go read by the time you see your 3d is lost again you started seeing your mother in law comes again you see again your 3d is lost in movie you may enjoy because they switch off the light everywhere and you are forced to sit there for 3 hour but in house you cannot enjoy your 3d because suddenly you have to see the real world 
and then problem started. And after few days, 3D aspects are somewhere in the cupboard, which you never bring it out. Ho gaya, khatam. Now 2D. So this is the problem. So this is useless. This has a lot of use. Second advantage, motion scaling, which is not possible. In the robotic surgery, there are buttons. There is a normal button, that is N. Then fine button, that is F. And then ultra fine button, UF. In normal is 1 is to 1. Means outside if you will move 1 centimeter, inside robot will also move 1 centimeter. Fine is 2 is to 1. If outside you will move 1 centimeter, inside movement will be only 5 mm, half. Means your double will be accepted. And the ultra fine is 5 is to 1. Outside if you will move 1 centimeter, inside movement will be only 2 millimeter. One of the big problem of laparoscopic surgery is that suppose you are doing tubal recanalization or pyeloplasty or CBD suturing bowel anastomosis. And if your seromuscular layer you have to take a bite and accidentally you take little big bite, it cut through and you are frustrated. Again you take a bite and move, cut through, you are frustrated. But in robotic it won't happen. You press fine or ultra fine button and your crude movement will be translated into a fine movement inside the abdomen. So even an intermediate level surgeon can do the advanced anastomosis, advanced surgery. And that's why tubal recanalization success rate in robotic is 75 percent, tubal recanalization. You know, prostate surgery is the gold standard because cystourethric anastomosis is very important. After removal of the prostate, remaining urethra, you have to anastomose with the remaining bladder, radical prostatectomy. And if your anastomosis is not good, patient will be crippled for whole life. Or CBD exploration, or bypass, RYGB, excellent anastomosis which is not possible in laparoscopy because there is no motion scaling. You cannot scale your motion. Third, wrist articulation. Wrist articulation is normally 4 degree. Like what are those degrees? If you are going in to out, this is 1 degree. Adduction, abduction, second degree. Flexion, extension, third degree. Supination, pronation, four degree. Am I right? Your hand has only this four degree movement. Either you can put the hand in, out, laparoscopically. Flexion, extension, and adduction, abduction. Supination, pronation. Even supination, pronation, this is your thumb. I will tell you to rotate. Up to 90 degree, you can rotate better. Maximum you can rotate how much? 180 degree. Am I right? If I will tell you to rotate more than 180 degree, you will start telling the truth. Isn't it? If someone will rotate your hand more than 180 degree, you will cry. And you will speak all the truth. So, wrist articulation in the robotic is 7 degree. Where here you have a limited range of motion, very limited. That's why when we have to take a bite, sometimes we cut through and we are struggling. Robotic, no problem. You can articulate even 720 degree. Now you will ask that actually you are operated. So if I can rotate only 90 degree, then how robot will rotate 720? Because it will translate my movement inside the abdomen. Am I right? Just like motion scaling, there is a rotational scaling. I will show you later. You have a button. And if you scale your rotation, your 15 degree will be translated inside as 90 degree. And your 90 degree as 180. You got my point? 
So I will rotate little and robot will rotate more. It will translate more rotation and that is called rotational scaling. I can scale my rotation just like motion scaling and that is great. After that next advantage it has fluid movement. We have a rigid, rigid movement. When you do Da Vinci robotic surgery you feel like you are sitting inside and you are moving your hand like inside a fluid, fluid environment like that. No resistance, very easy. Laparoscopy, you all see rigid, your introsia, your lumbricals, your deltoid is like that. It's very rigid movement. If you have to do this way for one hour, your all the arms, shoulders will ache. Tremor filter. Tremor is magnified. This is a big problem in robotic laparoscopy because our instrument is working as a lever action. So even if you have a little tremor and if your instrument is making class 3 lever, abdominal wall is a fulcrum. So see, it is magnifying the tremor. And you have a little movement inside, your instruments are not stable. And you will hit, cut through. In robotic, even if you are 90 year old, you can perform. Because robot does, doesn't allow your tremor to translate into the instrument. The software can easily find out the tremor. I have one good friend, his name is Dr. Chahan. He is also sick. He was working with me for last 15 years. You might have seen assisting me in the some of the videos. So recently his wife has cervical cancer and some renal failure issues. That's why he is not coming. He was a very good faculty in our institute. So his son is very intelligent. He competed in NEET PG and he wanted to be a surgeon like his father. But he has a tremor. He came to us. We told him to do some task in the laparoscopic OT, he was failing. Laparoscopic lab, he was feeling difficulty. But once we allow him to do robotic, he was okay. So he thought that he will make his career as a robotic surgeon. But ultimately, the, his friend suggested that radio diagnosis is better. And people are, I don't know why they want to become a radio diagnostic more. So he has taken MD radio diagnosis. So anyway, <laughs> but the robotic, you know, they, because they can work from home, they have a better peaceful life. That's why surgeons and gynecologists are in stress, isn't it? At 12 o'clock at night also, you have to go to do cesarean. That's why laparoscopy is much better. Electric laparoscopy, if you will do, you will better because at night, generally laparoscopy is elective surgery. And most of the gynecologists, when they started becoming a good laparoscopic surgeon, they leave obstetric part. They say, ki, nahi, nahi, obstetric humko nahi karna. I will do only laparoscopy, so that they can routinely do in the daytime. Because laparoscopy is considered as a daycare surgery, mostly. Because no emergency. Emergency wala ko to generally open karte. So that's why. So, tremor filter is a great advantage. You know, even if you have a Parkinsonism, even if you are a drinker, a smoker, and you have a tremor, you can operate by, because you are sitting and operating, and your tremor will be filtered. So till you die, you can operate. 90 years may be you can do surgery. Because you have a sitting, you don't have any postural problem. Even on the wheelchair, you can operate. You are on the wheelchair, you can do robotics. You don't need to retire because robots are smart. Do you know even a person who has one hand can operate? It has a, I will show you in the robot, it has a master association, buttons. So it will translate your right hand movement in the left side automatically. I will show you how it works. So this is great. Other big advantage is remote sensing technology. Abdominal wall is a fulcrum. 
one of the biggest problem of the laparoscopy is that we are insulting the abdominal wall a lot. Like you are applying myoma screw, suction irrigation or anything. And suppose myoma screw you have applied on the myoma and pushing it like that. Suppose you are applying 5 kg force to give anterior attraction and inside it is pushing like that. And this poor abdominal wall is tolerating both in also, out also. So abdominal wall, there is a trauma of 10 kg. Just like the fulcrum of the balance, which is why shopkeepers. The shopkeepers, they have, one side they put good, other side they put weight. And this poor fulcrum has to tolerate both. In laparoscopy, we cannot perform the surgery without using the abdominal wall as a fulcrum. Almost we are sitting over the abdominal wall of the patient. And sometimes we use ourselves to stabilize over the abdominal wall. Apna haat ka bhi weight us pe dal dete hain. Am I right? And this is giving lateral tear, muscle get stretched. Marginal ischemia happens due to the port. Ischemia get due to the margin of the wound. That's why infection is more, hernia is more. In robotic, it never use the abdominal wall as a fulcrum because it has a remote sensing technology. What this remote sensing technology is, that in their cannula, there is a gray area, cannula mein, a gray area hota hai. And then it moves the instrument over this gray area, automatically, involuntarily, it keep on moving. Even if you will remove the instrument, it move at that gray area itself. As if, it is not there. And that way it is impossible to do any trauma over the muscle. Most of the robotic ports we don't suture. We don't close the port. And in spite of that, ports are 8 mm. So it should be sutured, but we don't suture. And in spite of that, hernia doesn't happen and infection doesn't happen. Because absolutely even one pound, even if you will remove the abdominal wall, it will move on the same axis. Because there is a remote sensing technology. So it doesn't use abdominal wall as a fulcrum. Another big advantage, ergonomically intuitive, poor ergonomic. This is self-explained. Because here you are sitting, you can adjust the height of your robot. According to your height, you can bring it and there is a rest over the, your forehead, like a pillow. So once you put your head in the console, to aram se gadda rahta hai yaan. You will feel like sleeping also because it is very, very soft and very, and no any pressure over your neck. And you have a wrist also, the arm, forearm support. So you are feeling like your desk supporting and then only aise aise karna hai. Just like hand. So ergonomically very comfortable. You can have a cup of coffee also. Because surgeon is in unsterized zone. Surgeon doesn't need to wear the mask. No gloves. Gloves if you will use robot you cannot do. Because your movement will be little rigid. You need soft movement. So gloves is not required for surgeon. So you can have a coffee. You can have and as soon as your head comes out to take a coffee, automatically the instrument is a statue. It won't move once head is out. In laparoscopy, you leave the needle holder and take a coffee, your needle holder will pierce the needle in the iliac vessel. Am I right? It will not be a statue. Impossible. Ergonomically great. Poor ergonomics. Here, at the distance of 10 cm, you may have 25 times magnification. Here, at 10 cm, only 10 times. There are multiple instrument ejection system, means in robotics there are many instrument in which two instrument is together. Like needle holder has a seizures also. Base of the needle holder has seizure, tip of the needle holder has needle holder. So you don't have to change the instrument so frequently. It is not possible in laparoscopy, maybe in the future they will make it. Haptic feedback. Haptic feedback means software generated feedback. Just like if your instrument is hitting some bone or hitting each other, it will go zzz, 
sound will come and the right upper corner of the screen will have yellow icon. Yellow icon means you are doing error, you are doing hard, you are doing wrong. In the laparoscopy we don't have this. Just like your video game, one car hit another car, then console vibrates. That is called haptic. Your even mobile vibrates if you are playing game. Another telesurgery and teleproctoring, it is not possible. You know, right now, telesurgery, suppose, is not possible because of time lag, but proctoring you can do. Proctoring means your robot can connect it with any robot of the world with the IP address. Just like, you know, any computer of the world can be attached with another computer. Am I right? Have you used sometime Team Team Viewer? Team Viewer is a small software. You install in two computers remotely and give password to another person. Another person from anywhere, he can operate your computer. Am I right? And he can check your hard disk, he can check your software. He can connect it also. So similarly, two robots can be connected. So it is easy by IP address just. And do you know that's why all the robots are connected by internet with the intuitive surgical. And they are doing software updates. And they are seeing everything what you are doing. Just like your window and Mac is still connected with the internet. Microsoft knows everything what are you doing. They are saying that, no, 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 we are maintaining the privacy, but nothing like privacy is there. They look at everything you do and they see your every software and that's why next time they do upgrade. Am I right? So every time they do window updates, window updates. And they upgrade your software and any, any, any part of the software corrupted, they reinstall. So exactly same way intuitive surgical is connected with your robot and they are maintaining your and re reinstalling it. So teleproctoring is possible. That maybe he will not do but I can tell someone in America, England or any your country or maybe your other hospital in the same city that I am operating please see it and give me verbal command. So he can speak. There is, every robot has a microphone and a speaker. And audio visual, he can say, go right, dissect more, no, 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 dissect a little more, make more sculptinization. Itna mein to koi dikkat hai, there's no time lag in that. Cook couple of more time. Am I right? So that way, teleproctoring. But in laparoscopy, if you want to proctor or mentor someone, physically, you have to go there. And physically going, nobody wants to go. Why should I go for teaching you? So, this is the advantage. Remember, people, they speak a lot of bad about the robot. What they say, what is the advantage of the patient? Four port here also, four port there also. It is not like that. Because all these advantage which is there, patient is getting affected. You know, we are not taking these advantage with ourselves. Ultimately, it reflect on the prognosis of the patient. Now, Seven degree of freedom. Multiple joints are there to achieve that freedom. Haptic feedback. It is a sensory substitution of the tactile feedback. This is the alternative sense of the robot. And this haptic feedback is improving day by day, day by day. You know, robotic technology is advancing a lot. And now in the artificial technology is inserted into the robot. New generation robots are coming, which I will show you later slides. And it cannot roll back. Don't worry. Don't think that it is a propaganda, it will stop. All of you have to stop doing laparoscopic surgery within 10 years. And you have to start robotic. Three dimensional vision. Three dimensional vision. Tele mentoring, remote proctoring, it is possible. Tele mentoring, remote proctoring. Suturing, suturing of the robotic and suturing of laparoscopy has a lot of difference. We can see this is surgeon's knot. On the left side, you have a robot, on the right side, you have a 
laparoscope. Now let us start. Both the surgery is started. Laparoscopy is right now ahead. Here it has to take one bite only. For robot we have given a task to take two bites. Laparoscopy has already made a C. Robot is still pulling the suture. Laparoscopy has already taken double wrap. Robot is still pulling the suture. Laparoscope here it is the first knot is taken. Robot is still pulling the suture. Now laparoscope it is making a reverse C. Robot has taken the first C and taking two wrap. Laparoscope is now doing reverse C and robot has taken first knot. Laparoscopy has taken the first bite also, robot is still taking reverse C and it is also going to first bite. Laparoscope has tied the second knot, robot has also tied the second knot. Now laparoscopy is making C again, robot is also making C again. Now laparoscope has taken a last knot and it is done, robot has also taken last knot, it is done. After that you see. I am stopping. See, laparoscope is holding the needle end by Maryland, then bringing the needle holder out, then bringing the scissors, then carefully cutting the suture, then bringing scissors out, then again carefully bringing the needle holder and then start it. And now see the robot. Rubber, the same suture, it will cut by the same needle holder is acting as a scissors and it has cut. Did you see? You do not have to remove it. Now, ultimately at the end you will see here, it has taken only two bite here, a char bite already lelia. This is the four bite. So, this is the advantage of robotic. A winner will be robotic. That is why robotic is always better for bigger surgeries. If you want to do appendectomy, laparoscopy will be faster. Laparoscopic appendectomy, adha ghanta mein, half an hour maximum, into out you can do. Robotic it will take one hour. Because docking, undocking, is up. Just like if you want to go from here to airport, by helicopter it will be take more time. Helicopter will land and carefully you will sit and then take off and then the again it will land and by the time by taxi you will reach there, <laughs> isn't it? But if you have to go from here to Mumbai or Patna or Bengal anywhere, Calcutta, then it is better to do robot helicopter similarly. That's why advanced surgery, radical prostatectomy, hemicolectomy. Ruan by gastric bypass, these are surgery which is good. Then popular application, most popular application is radical prostatectomy. Remember once upon a time intensive surgical was getting to be bankrupt. America they do not promote it. America court has ordered that you cannot sell in the America and they started selling in other country. other country because anyhow they have to survive bread and butter. Other country is not under FDA. So they started selling in the France, selling in the other country. They approached the Indian Prime Minister at that time and the first robot was purchased in our AIMS in 2001 and it was Dr. Hamel. Dr. Hamel is one of the very big robotic surgeon in India. He has started, this is Dr. Hamel and he has written many books, this is Dr. Hamel and he was a, you know, started robotic surgery in our All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So after that he shifted to America, this is the problem of the Indians <laughs> that one they get a lot of, you know, then after that they 6000 robotic surgery performed. He is Dr. Hamel and then he shifted to America. So he was, it was purchased by our All India Institute of Medical Sciences. So robotic most popular procedure is prostatectomy, most popular. 
just like credit of popularizing the lapros laparoscopy goes to cholecystectomy credit of popularizing the robotic go to prostatectomy radical prostatectomy due to this surgery only this technology was promoted then pyeloplasty radical cystectomy cyst decortication cardiac mitral and aortic valve replacement aortoiliac bypass and cardiac bypass these are the most popular surgery in gynae hystectomy prolapse repair tubal reversal fistula repair myomectomy do you know these all procedures has been reported to be better than laparoscopy the randomized trials and the data and in the general surgery gastric bypass nissen fund duplications these are considered the better than the laparoscopy already published data but any surgery you can do any minimal access surgery you can perform there are few gynecologists in america who even prefer to do diagnostic by robotic because their idea is that if there is endometriosis deep endometriosis i can see by robot because of 3d better and if i want to convert it into laparoscopy i can achieve it better so why to do laparoscope i will do by robotics diagnostic one of the very popular indian robotic surgeon who is doing even the simple pro he never does the laparoscopy so this is dr minakshi jain this is dr minakshi jain she is in st petersburg this is in florida this is dr minakshi jain and she is doing even the diagnostic also she is molanian she is from molana azad medical college delhi and if anyone you want to go she is one of our faculty also and anyone want to go you can go there to work under him and uh, she is uh, taking few online classes also sometime for us this is dr minakshi jain and this is this is her profile on our website that is laparoscopy hospital this is minakshi jain so she is doing almost every gynae surgery with the da vinci robot and uh, this is the advantage and uh, people are ready do you know why because any way insurance is covering it so it is addiction robot is addiction once you will started using the robot after that you will not like anything to use wo apko aadat ho jayega you will not like ab ac mein rehne ka aadat ho gaya na to fan you will never like you will shout if the you go to hotel and ac is not working you will leave the hotel go to other hotel bhaad mein jao humko jana hai ac am i right exactly same way robotic it is addiction addiction laparoscopy you will hate that's why we are keeping robotic training at the end <laughs> if we would have given you first day to aap bole nahi nahi aapko humko paisa wapas kar dijiye sir i will not learn the laparoscopy better i will learn robotics this is such a beautiful thing so any minimal access surgery can be performed now docking should be correct docking should be correct where should i put my port this is a very common question where should i put my port you know a statistic shown that most common cause of stressful surgery is wrong port position because ergonomics is more important in robotic because if port is wrong you will be in big trouble just like if you are walking then even the road is bad there are gutters there are water spillage mud because you have analytic power as a human you can jump or you can take side but if you have a road you have to be more you have a car then you need a better road if it is mud if it is a gutter your car will be trapped isn't it similarly robot is a machine 
but it need better road to travel so correct docking is important but good thing about it is strictly follow the baseball diamond rule similarly similarly half instrument should be in half instrument out why not for fulcrum fulcrum effect is not for elevation angle because if your instrument is less inside elevation angle increases this is called remote sensor remote sensor should must be on the abnormal wall there are three area one thick gray area one thin and another thin so this thick area should be on abnormal wall and then one thin line inside one thin line outside and then you can work better principle of robotic is baseball diamond concept half instrument in half instrument out telescope should be always in the middle robot hates ipsilateral pole position why we do ipsilateral because we are human we want our uh, you know luxury also our ergonomics also our fatigue also so in ipsilateral your arm is like that in contralateral it is like this am i right so we don't want to put like that because our deltoid is weak and we want contralateral traction and do you know every uterus you cannot give that much contralateral traction if it is mobile is small it is good but suppose there is a endometriosis frozen pelvis or big fibroid can you give contralateral traction no so ipsilateral is not possible but contralateral is possible for every patient all the advanced surgery is always done by contralateral am i right nephrectomy splenectomy gastric bypass even bad myomectomy even for the sacrocolpopexy but suspension even for pectopexy firing the tacker contralateral robot always does contralateral so telescope always in the middle of working instrument manipulation angle here can go up to 90 degree in laparoscopy we hardly has a 60 degree more than 60 degree 90 karenge na to your arm will be abducted but robot doesn't mind even up to 90 degree and for 90 degree manipulation angle how much should be the distance between two instrument no it should be 10 10 then it will be in between two instrument will be 20 am i right for 60 degree how much 7.5 7.5 so how much 15 and suppose due to any reason one azimuth angle you are bringing five then another 10 yes so bara dena padega because in between two instrument always your distance should be 15 then only 60 degree will form am i right this distance so that is there but in robotic up to 20 cm it can go and 10 10 cm either side you can go possible a remote sensor should be respected it should be in the abnormal wall so that it will not give any fulcrum effect on the abnormal wall no resistance of the abnormal wall so it is telescope in the center and two instruments should make 60 to 90 degree angle here also just like a baseball field now docking is very important what is docking docking means how the robot is attached with the patient just like docking is important in the sea cost how the ship is coming and attached to dock that is called docking so the rule of docking is that wherever in laparoscopy to get a coaxial alignment you are keeping monitor that monitor should be replaced by the robot like if you are doing french position college cystectomy here is a cystic pedicle this is the gall bladder french position this is the college cystectomy you are standing in between the leg am i right and your monitor should be near the shoulder in american position we put one here we put one here and this we bring here am i right so in american position what is one azimuth angle 15 other azimuth angle 45 but in french position is 30 30 either side and french are doing better college cystectomy than us because they are always in between the leg 
and their manipulation angle is better they can switch it better they can do better because ideally 30 30 degree azimuth angle is the angle between telescope and instrument but robot doesn't do ipsilateral and robot why should it do 130 145 it does always azimuth 30 30 and it will be docking and robot will come like this it will come from shoulder so wherever you keep monitor to get a coaxial alignment robot comes replace the monitor and then it attach this is the rule thumb rule to do the docking like suppose you want to do appendectomy and this is contralateral port position for appendectomy then robot will do docking like this in laparoscopy we stand opposite to the pathology robot stand towards the pathology and it is replacing the monitor if you are performing left sided hernia or left sided ovarian cystectomy or left sided varicocelectomy then robot will dock like that it will replace your monitor docking is very important like prostectomy myomectomy or hysterectomy robot should go like this to do docking So robotic instrument should behave like a type 1, behave like it is not necessary to have type 1 liver, but it should behave like because it does not work on liver action remember, because robot does not use fulcrum. So for liver fulcrum is required, any liver without fulcrum liver cannot work, any liver of the world, seizures is also a liver, the repeat joint of the two jaw of the liver seizures is fulcrum, am I right? So robot does not need, but it should behave like why for proper elevation angle. Telescope always in the middle, manipulation can, can go from single this uh, um, 60 to 90, elevation 30, distance it even should not be more than 10 centimeter, distance between two instruments should not be more than 10 centimeter, azimuth angle 30 to 45, azimuth angle 30 to 45, shadow of the telescope should be down and remote sensor should be respected. So these are the docking principle. We will learn how to do docking in the lab also today. We will learn it. Now surgery. Surgery, I do not want to go in every surgery detail. I will briefly show you quick, quick surgery. Because task analysis is same like laparoscopy. And we are not here to learn surgery, we are here to learn robot how to work. Just like driving a car, you have to learn how to drive a car. After that it is up to you how you use your skill to drive. You may use it for driving a car for earning your blade and butter as a taxi driver. You may use it for kidnapping also, driving. And you may use it for a sports or long drive also with your girlfriend. So same way you learn robot after that surgery is your idea. So we are here just to surgery same like appendectomy. And in your member area we have given you many robotic societies member area you can go and you can go to intensive surgical website username and password is there. And you can download hundreds and just I will show you a little bit because all of you are forgetting immediately. So I will tell you you go to laparoscopyhospital.com. And after that you go to alumni section, then go there and put username and password and then click here in the member area and then here is a intensive surgical website, robotic resources. Just I am copying it and then you click here. After that it will take you to intensive surgical. Then you go and here login and after login you put the username and password and login. And once you log in, then it will have hundreds and hundreds of videos to learn. Even if you are laparoscopic surgeon, you should learn it. Do you know why? Because it will give you task analysis. And it will ask you what you will like to do today. But of course, you will say that I will like to do learning. 
and go to learning. This is inventory, means you want to buy some instrument, then you can order it from here. And after that, you accept all the cookies, then you go and you just go and you search your videos. So just you can go to the main menu and just you go to the my learning and you can see the libraries or you can see the support or you can get any videos like videos and you have the hundreds and hundreds of videos are there more 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 all these videos keep on going on huge unlimited videos they have every surgery every surgery videos like suppose and even not instrument insertion like you want to know how to insert the instrument then click here and they will demonstrate you how to once the patient cart arms are docked instruments can be inserted before insertion instrument tip should be closed and wrists straight a sterile staff member inserts the instrument tip into the cannula then installs the instrument housing onto the sterile adapter until fully seated when the system is ready the arm led will turn solid blue and the icons on the assistant monitor will indicate that the instrument is engaged. When inserting an instrument for the first time, always insert under direct vision. If an instrument is out of view, you will see an off-screen tool indicator on the vision cart monitor. Once the instrument is engaged, a sterile staff member will guide the instrument into the surgical field under direct vision via the assistant monitor. Please note that both team members are watching assistant monitors while inserting instruments and controlling the endoscope. When the sterile staff member so this has way released you the have clutch, the surgeon can take control of the instrument. Each and everything you can learn. Learn, you can for see the procedure videos. Always make sure you can find out all the surgery videos for learning, and so the other sites are also there. So I will not take your time. Otherwise, it is a, every surgery already. You are a surgeon, gynecologist. You know the surgery. We should know the instrument. Just like car, you should know where is clutch, where is brake, where is horn, how to change the gear. Am I right? And then you can learn. So this way, robotic appendectomy. Here we are performing this the is damage. a very easy procedure. These are the instruments. I am taking little, little faster. Just like laparoscopy, you will catch. This is a bipolar Maryland, and this is coagulating, making a window, and this is the major appendix. After that, it is tying a knot, and this is knot is tightened. And this ligated. Unfortunately, robot cannot tie extracorporeal knot. So you have to tie intracorporeal, and then you coagulate, and then cut the appendix, and then take it out. So this is major appendix is cut, knot is tightened, and now coagulating with the bipolar left side is a bipolar Maryland, and right side is seizures. And now you will coagulate like that, and then cut the appendix. Always use bipolar. Remember, monopolar, if you will, after tying a knot, if you will coagulate by monopolar, your knot area will burn because it is a narrow area there. Am I right? This is even in laparoscopy, this is a rule that after tying a knot, never use monopolar because current will travel through the cecum and the knot is narrow area, it will burn and now cut it. And that's all. After that, this is the ovarian cystectomy. Here is a unmarried girl and she has a 8 centimeter simple ovarian cyst. So this is the ovarian cyst and this is opening and this is cutting and this is a stripping. So it's very easy to do robotic because your both the instruments are working together and like that you can separate. This is ovarian cystectomy. This is a grasper on the right side and there is a Maryland, this is a bipolar Maryland on the left side and you have a better ambidextrity and wrist articulation. Anyway, you don't need any uterine manipulator. If it is unmarried girl doing some time ovarian cystectomy by laparoscopy is difficult because you may need someone to keep the uterus inverted so that. But in the unmarried girl, you cannot use uterine manipulator. Robotic is very good for them. Because without disturbing the robot, you can have a better articulation. And see, if it is bleeding, you can just with the bipolar, you can coagulate little bit like that. <coughs> and then it is separated. So it's very easy. And because you have 3D vision, right now we are seeing 2D. But in reality, you have a 3D vision and you can operate like that. So it is done. 
is just the little bit coagulation for preventing the oozing and it is out. So, this is out. Ambidextrity is great, both the hand works equal. Whereas in laparoscopy, your ambidextrity is difficult, it is done, it is so over. Just final coagulation and stripping done. After that, this is the college hysterectomy. Just like simple hair, this we have demonstrated during the hair in India Third World Con Congress. And here it is a gallbladder. Now it is separating, separating. This is the posterior peritoneum, and this is a cystic pedicle, and this is a window, posterior window, and then this is ligating a knot here. We are ligating a knot here on the cystic duct. There is not intracorporeal. Cystic duct is ligated, and then hemolock is applied above and cutting in between the knot and hemolock. This is scissors and cutting in between the knot and the hemolog and cystic duct is done. Otherwise you can apply two knot and then on the artery again hemolog is applied, this is hemolog on the artery. Titanium clip also you can apply, after that cutting the duct and then separating the gallbladder, this is harmonic hook sorry this uh, uh, robotic hook and with the hook these are the peritoneum that is shoulders. You can cut the shoulders and slowly, slowly you can separate the gallbladder from liver. You know, Ethicon is making harmonic also for intrusive surgical. Your generator will be same, only you have to buy a har robotic harmonic probe. It has different design and you can attach to the robot. So, it is not limited only to hook, you can use harmonic, you can use bipolar, you can use monopolar, you can use ligature, you can use advanced plasma kinetic energies all and this is hook separating. So, this is gallbladder, gallbladder, gallbladder and it is last part. So, this is last part. So, surgery is same, here also ICG you can use, fluorescent technology you can use and it is done. After that this is the hysterectomy, here also similarly you will apply round ligament 4 centimeter lateral. This is bipolar, right side, left side is bipolar, right, this is contralateral port. Can you see the contralateral? Left side is bipolar, right side is scissors. So, bipolar is coagulating and scissors is cutting. This is round ligament, then fallopian tube, this is anterior leaf of the broad ligament, this is UV fold, and now it is coagulating uterine artery either side, and uterine is coagulated, this is left side uterine. And for right side, bipolar will go to right side and seizure will come left side like that. And after that, this is colpotomizer, this is colpotomy and the tip of the seizure. See, seizures is very much covered here, very much. And this is colpotomizer. See, seizure is covered up to here. All is plastic. So, there is no any. And then slowly, slowly you are cutting. This is anterior, posterior, lateral colpotomy and uterus will come out. Similarly, there is no step. Because basically also this is minimal access surgery. And now uterus will be taken out through the vagina. Here also uterine manipulator will be used by vagina. And robot will not do anything its own. You have to do everything. Suturing, knotting, everything you have to do. And this is a barb suture. And no monopolar. Scissors are mostly monopolar. Only stall has made once upon a time plastic jaw but it doesn't work. So, this is done and it is sutured. Here also same direct coupling, capillative coupling, insulation failure, over suturing all can happen. There is no difference in the energy sources. After remember robot does not make energy source also, they do not make energy sources. They only make robot, they never make insufflator, they never make bipolar, they never make harmonic, the same harmonic, same bipolar which you are using in your operation theater, you have to use it. Now, this is the radical prostatectomy. See here, the prostate is removed. This is foley's catheter. And now, this is cystourethric anastomosis. And this is called posterior reconstruction. You have to take a bite on the urethra. This is urethra. And posterior bite at 6 o'clock is taken on the urethra into out. This is posterior bite is taken on the urethra into out. And now, in the bladder, it will be out to in.
this is very difficult by even open because going that much deep and rotating the needle and in the laparoscopy it is struggling but thanks to robot you cannot see any tremor any tremor and it is just trying intracorporeal not this is posterior reconstruction always in anastomosis posterior reconstruction is done first 6 o'clock you have to do first am i right because without 6 o'clock you cannot continue so this is separating and slowly slowly you can do it so after that you have to take a bite at 5 o'clock 5 o'clock is still more difficult because at 5 o'clock problem is that you have to take a bite this is out to in out to in any way is good you can take it but into out will be more difficult so this is important to keep in mind and slowly separating it so this is going the separation and this way slowly slowly you can go ahead and they see how into out it is taking that is 5 o'clock it will be a struggling by laparoscopy but thanks to robot it is easy so it is done after that this is again going out to in so this way it is very easy anastomosis and you can see by the end of the surgery it will be extremely beneficial so this is the advantage of doing robotic surgery so this is how you can continue and then this is a bite 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 taken and now it is sutured after that this is the sleeve gastrectomy this is a very easy surgery by robotics you can take a robot this is a stomach and then these are the short gastrics you can cut the short gastric and for the robot there are power staplers power stapler battery so just you press and teeth we cut in one straight line you don't have to manually fire the stapler so you can this is a gun and after that this is the stapler and this is power c power stapler once you fire and this is the stomach taken and you will see this blade will move this blade here is the blade and it will go and it will come back so see the he coming back and it is done and after that you can take it out so it will be very easy and you can perform the surgery and this is stomach is done and it is taken out after that this is the myomectomy so it, it is very easy you will cut, inject vasopressin similarly cut the muscle here robot doesn't have myoma screw it has a tenaculum the myoma screw is useless it is rod it cannot bend it cannot articulate tenaculum is much better this is tenaculum very strong left hand has a tenaculum right hand has a this monopolar seizures and slowly slowly you will cut and separate so i am taking a little forward and it is separating 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 and this myoma is removing this is base of the myoma easily you can articulate your instrument and easily myoma can be taken out after that you can suture in two layer similarly as you do in the laparoscopy this is the myoma is out and then this is suturing by the bicrill this is the inner layer that is a muscle layer and after that serous layer so absolutely surgery is same one of the very good thing about robotic is that whatever you have learned in laparoscopy will be carry forward to the robotic wo seedhe wahan transfer ho jata hai so that skill will not be wasted your instrument will be wasted but your skill will not be wasted because your skill just like if you are already driving a maruti then in lamborghini you don't have to learn again bas thoda sa pata hona chahiye how it works exactly same way in laparoscopic skill is transferred to the robot so this is done and it is separated and now slowly 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 it is over it is done now clinical limitation clinical limitation means not cost effective over a standard lap laparoscopic approach this is a big problem you know the cost of the robot is 18 crore and after that you have to give cmc 75 lakh rupees per year that is maintenance costs comprehensive maintenance cost 75 lakh rupees per year and one instrument will cost you 2 lakh rupees one instrument one seizures 2 lakh rupees 
dollars, 2.3 million dollars is the cost of robot. There is one organization in India, in world. After this training, you may get their membership. That is called CRSA. CRSA, this is the largest organization of the world. That is called Clinical Robotic Surgical Association. This is United States of America. This is called CRSA. This is CRSA website. And this is considered as the largest organization of the world for robotic surgeon. After this course, you will get in diploma, you will get a robotic certificate also. And this is the CRSA. They have in the, their website, there are 3473 videos, 203 nations are member, 210 unique visitors, 89 like this. So this is CRSA website, which is loading slowly, slowly, it is slow. And after that, it has a member everywhere. So you can become a member, you have the videos, you have a networking, or you have a serving all the educational opportunity, annual conferences, and a lot of advantages are there to become, if you want to become the carrier in the robotic surgery, then this organization is important. And this is called CRSA. They have the conferences every year in different part of the world and they have this is CRSA media library and it is institutional group membership like that you can happen. So this is CRSA. Now it has one national chapters also and national chapter this is Indian chapter and I am clicking Indian chapter and this is chapter India in which uh, there are founding members. So pattern, our pattern is Palani value and I am also one of the founding member. This is me, this is the founding member. Dr. Praveen Bhatti is also founding member and this way this organization works. So all the robotic surgeons and all the robotic institutions who do robotic surgery, in India there are 160 robots. Almost all the major city has many robots. Like in Delhi itself, we have eight robots. Now it will be, I think, 12. So every major, in Mumbai, there are 20. Everywhere robot, all the major city, we have robot. You will be surprised that in America, there are 7,500 robots. 7,500. And in India, we have only 160. And you know, in UK, how many? Only 75 less than India. Reason being that United Kingdom don't want to buy robot because their health budget is controlled by NHS. And NHS is not trying to increase the health budget further. And in America it is commercialized completely insurance so they have mushrooming. Every third hospital has robot. In India we have very less 160. And every six month we have a meeting in some of the five star hotel or some uh, hospital and all the owners are coming there in that meeting. And everybody has handkerchief in their hand and everyone is crying. <laughs> and you will ask why you are crying then they will say that the, you ask your another colleague that this year how much loss they will say this year I have a 60 lakh loss. You have how much? I have 50 lakh loss. All are running in loss thinking that in the future they will make profit. <laughs> Doesn't work. All are in loss. Only few hospitals are in profit. Like Medanta in profit, Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute in profit, Ganga Ram is no profit, no loss, Apollo is in loss. Like that. Question is why? Then why are they doing? The reason being that if they don't do, even the normal patient also doesn't come to them. Because patient asks that, do you have a robot? Then you, you will say no, then they will think that you are an inferior hospital. Just like if your neighbor has purchased a BMW, so you have Mercedes Otherwise your son will kill you. That they have BMW and what is you are saying, you are a doctor and you don't have any car. So you will take a loan, but you will buy it. Am I right? So similarly, 
robotic become here in our hospital we are 10 lakh rupees per month loss due to keeping the robot it is just like a white elephant you buy and keep on giving <laughs> now the question is then why are you teaching us robotic the reason being it is a correct time to learn robotic i will tell you we have started doing robotic surgery here in 2010 and at that time one very young surgeon come to me that sir at that time we were having only robot after ems medanta was not build up rajiv gandhi didn't have and even the this gangaram doesn't have robot we we, we bought it so after that one young surgeon came to me to learn robotic i said that okay he was very young so i said that you have how much experience of laparoscopy not much and he was the son of the health minister of himachal pradesh so i trained him after that he started doing directly the robotic surgery with very less experience of laparoscopy his name is dr vivek bindal after our institute he went to the other places also and he is dr vivek bindal he is one of the best this is another bindal this is bindra this is bindal so and he is now doing a lot of robotic surgery and he is heading the max institute of the robotic surgery this is dr vivek bindal his father is bjp uh minister in the himachal pradesh so this is the idea that if anything new if you want to do at correct time then only you will be click if you might be thinking that i am not how can i become a robotic surgeon but it is not like that it is just the mindset do you know you learn robotic suppose and then you write in your letter head that laparoscopic and robotic surgeon any name dr malti dr sapna dr any robotic surgeon patient comes to you that are you robotic surgeon you see yes okay where do you do i work in medanta or in gangaram or apollo after that go to that hospital patient will say yes i please do it for me after that you go to those corporate hospital and ask their superintendent don't meet any consultant and ask the superintendent that will you allow me to use your robot immediately they will tell their assistant where is the red carpet please bring the red carpet to me please come immediately come what you will like coffee tea then you see coffee is fine and then they will offer their robot to you maybe they can say in the beginning that am i consultant always also with you because they are not confident about your skill and then you can share some of your profit with their consultant and then do robotic <clears throat> they are dying to use their robot why because return on investment to cover just like you think about you purchase a car for rental and that car is idle standing in front of your house you will feel bad but you are booking in advance for one month every day your car is booked you will be happy or sad happy because your car is for rental you will car buy another car similarly and mind it i will tell you if you will make more robotic patient then they will remove their consultant they will make you consultant <laughs> yes it's true corporate wants patient corporate wants money so once you earn for them and their robot is used by more by you then the same this is the correct time uh, this is the correct time why because they are getting exploited and you should exploit them am i right america is exploiting the corporates and you exploit the corporates and then use their robot this is a correct time to start robotic surgery because in the their hand of young 
younger you are starting don't think that one day you will have become old and you will do thousands of surgery and then robotic it will never come always you want to make a robotic surgeon catch them young younger generation can only take the new technology olders are not possible to unlearn and relearn for the older unlearn do you know when i started laparoscopic training in year 2000 my first batch there were four student only and all were professor i advertised in the jima journal of indian medical association so they come and once they saw me a teacher hai my age was hardly 26 years and he said who is the teacher first i touch their feet otherwise they would have killed me <laughs> because they were professor so to satisfy their ego i attached their feet sir please who is the teacher who will teach i said sir me how why you can teach how can you teach i said sir i will teach you don't worry me we will share <laughs> teaching word i cannot speak from my mouth and then i started and there were only three day courses just like how 3 day in mahim and other places and after 3 day they give me a lot of blessings a lot of blessings the reason being i did my masters in minimal access surgery at that time in nine wells hospital from all over world only five student from all over world were admitted for this course and i have the first qualification of university masters in minimal in asia so i was knowing the and i was dying to give my idea and knowledge to someone else so the professor today i am seeing so happy all of you are junior to me all are you are young at that time in 2000 this age cannot even dare about touching the laparoscope not dare about also touching thinking laparoscope means something out of this world professors we are learning but now younger sir learning just pass the pg and become and you are better than us the seniors and we have done a lot of complications because we have learned ourselves at that time that much good training was not there so it is very important that start robotic today don't think about that you will become expert laparoscopic surgeon cost effective is one of the limitation but that is for company the company let them struggle but you use this privilege that because it is not cost effective so they want it to give to anyone because once they give cmc then anything happen to robot company is responsible increase operating time and large operation room is required not necessary when precision is not required like doing the simple surgery like appendectomy cholecystectomy has not much advantage because precision is not required that much but advanced surgery these are king the limitations good patient side assistant is required because you are trapped with the robot and suppose person who is doing uterine manipulation or holding the mama screw or anything or retracting the fundus of the gallbladder in laparoscopy if he is not doing according to your expectation you can hold his instrument and you can do it and you can tell him to keep it held like that am i right in robotic you are away from patient so you need a very good assistant otherwise you will keep on shouting kya kar rahe ho yaar kaise kar rahe ho yaar like suppose needle robot will not take needle from the table and put it needle your assistant has to introduce an assistant during introduction of needle he will perforate the bowel then what you will do so good patient side assistant is required robotic disbelievers some people they never believe the robot they say no long term data these are basically sadist type of people they say no long term data to show that better than laparoscopy just like how 30 year ago when laparoscopy started many people were criticizing including my father i said him that and he was very good he did 60000 open surgery 
but laparoscopy he could not because they were hesitant to learn and they were saying no 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 it is a propaganda it won't same people right now is saying about robotic ki aise hi hai nothing is there now loss of tactile feedback improved vision only on the cost of one more surgeon expensive enabler same operation sophisticated tool directly patient doesn't have any advantage hospital stay is same one day next day he will discharge number of ports are same rather more here we can do by 3 5 mm and here robotic is 8 mm so direct pain and direct hospital stay direct advantage is not there so it is expensive enabler same surgery sophisticated tool and limited training facilities of level only few centers they give training so this is the problem but question is that now what is the future now you will be surprised that in america 52% of all the gynae surgery this is us data us da vinci procedures this is us da vinci procedure so 52% of all the gynae surgery 24% of all general surgery 20% of all urology and cardiothoracic and transoral 4% is performed by robotic there are 12000 robotic surgeons in the world and 70% of all of them is trained in the us here we have trained 960 robotic surgeons in that 48% are urologists 30% are surgeon and 22% are gynecologists this is the data of the robotic what it is in 2023 there was 12% annual growth 3.17 in 2018 and here it is 2023 it is 12% growth is there 60% 68% of the growth of the robot is alone in united states of america and remaining is the whole world almost 90% of all the prostatectomy is done by robot approximately 50% 40 to 50% of all the hysterectomy by robot hernia repaired less colorectal is almost and colorectomy very less robotic market in 2025 is going to be 13271 billion dollar billion this is going to be us million dollar 13271 million dollar it is going to be in 2025 so see the graph how this graph is increasing and that's why now second generation competitors has come all the big players are now making robot you know intensive surgical has the last patent expire in 2020 after that within 3 year every big company of the world has started making robot like this is second generation amadeus robot this is from titan surgical it has multi articulating arm sound communication system enhanced vision real time feedback titan this is the sport robot of the titan surgical this is single incision robot 15 mm camera this is camera inside and it has the multiple articulating arms and then you can adjust the manipulation angle elevation angle and it can perform the surgery here we can see it is cutting the tissue and then suturing this is one canadian company that is called amadeus robot that is from titan surgical and a sport robot a sport is single port and amadeus is four port and we have one stem with the four arm available so these are second generation competitors which has come and they are competing with the cost and cost is very less so this is the titan surgical sport robot sport means single port robot and uh, this, this is there now again go ahead i am stopping this video next video here this is the second generation competitor surgery board from transcentrix <clears throat> transcentrix has already launched in india and most of the robotic head quarter is in cyber city as you know gurgaon is the hub it hub most of the are in the cyber city here and this is the transcentrix 
surgery board. This is also single incision robot which you can adjust. It will support itself. It also doesn't give any pressure over the abdominal wall. It also has remote sensor. You can adjust the manipulation angle. This is a studio scope. You can see two light and two lenses. This also gives you 3D vision and it is patient side robot. Patient side robot means you will be on the side of the patient. So that is another advantage that suppose your assistant is not doing the proper work according to your expectation, you can help your patient also. And this elevation angle, here you have a clutch and with this clutch you can rotational scaling and motion scaling you can control. And this clutch can control your elevation angle also. Like suppose your arm is little more away from the shoulder, uh, away from elbow, you can control. So this is a very good robot that is called surgery board. Cost is very less. See this arm is very up. Now there is a finger, in the finger there is a clutch. Press the finger, clutch and adjust the, adjust the elevation angle and after that it will work. <clears throat> it also has 3D and 2D both and linear as well as motion scaling. You can see here, this button is for motion scaling, this is for rotational scaling. So you can scale your circular motion, you can scale, this is 2D, 3D and you can change your instrument and you can perform the surgery. This is called surgery board from Transcentric. This is called Sheehan's robot, Transcentric. It is already launched in India. Their head office is also in Gurgaon in the cyber city and they are also multiple arm robot. It is not limited to one arm or four arm or five arm. You can buy six, seven arms. Like in colorectal surgery sometimes and all the instruments are <coughs> reusable. And all the instruments you can use and the instruments are 5 mm, 5 mm instruments. So it is much uh, lesser than the intensive surgical, although undoubtedly intensive surgical is leader because last 20 years they are selling, 23 years now. And this is your hand instrument movement. Now this Transcentrix is claiming that they have tactile feedback. If you are touching something soft, you will feel this this tactile feedback over your handle of the instrument. So they say that it is similar like your tech. So you push, then you will feel handle is pushing. Someone will pull, you will see handle is pulling. So they have little tactile feedback. And this is also popular robot and which is selling in the market now. And it is FDA approved. FDA has already approved it. And this is the little tactile movement. Here it is, camera is, you know, controlled by your head movement and your movement of eyeball. In intensive surgical, you have foot control for camera. Here is automatic control. See, when you will move your eyeball, camera will follow your eyeball. If you lean towards the patient, it will give close up. If you move away from the patient, it will give not, not patient from the screen. So camera is following, tracking your eyeball. Every nowadays advanced computer has this eyeball tracking technology. You see it and it will keep on moving the screen. screen. Just like you don't have to touch by your finger. Your movement of eyeball, it will swipe the pages. The same way. And this is fundoplication doing by transcentric robot. This has multiple arms. You can buy two, three, four, five, six, seven arms for advanced surgery. Whereas Da Vinci robot has fixed four arms. In that four arm, one is telescope and all the three are working instrument. But here you can have more you want. Like in colorectal, three arm will operating arm will not work. You need four, five. So that's why you can do transcentric robot. I will again go ahead. This is a Hugo robot. This is from Medtronic. Who is Medtronic? Do you know Medtronic already? Medtronic, Covidian, Tyco, Auto Suture and Valley Lab is same company. Medtronic is making Ligasure. That is Medtronic. Medtronic is a branch of Covidian. And they are making Hugo robot. Their headquarter is also here. They are already selling in India. They have launched it. And many, they have sold at least, I don't know, but exactly number, at least 10, 10 they have sold already. This is Hugo robot and this is from Covidian. This is also very popular multiple arm. Many arms can be combined together 
and it has all the arms separate from each other. It is very easy to bring from one, one end to another and one OT to another. And this is Hugo Robot. This is also very popular and less than intensive surgical. After that, there is one CMR robot. CMR robot is very popular. One of our very senior surgeon, Dr. Pradeep Chabe, he is promoting this robot a lot. He is in Max. And this is called CMR robot. This is also very popular. At least 30 CMI robot is already installed in India. If they have one very good scheme that they will put their robot and they will share your profit. Like if your hospital has a good turnover, then they will put their robot with their money and whatever you will do surgery in that they will take profit. Means they, they give the, this, yes, they give them free robot and they keep on earning. Little investment you have to do. So this is very good. And this is great precision and this is called CMR robot. It also has complete, you know, seven degree of movement and it's very good. It is getting popular and less expensive compared to intensive surgical. This is also having 5 mm ports and multiple arms are there. That is done. After that, you have mantra robot. This is made in India robot. This is mantra robot. This is started by Dr. Sudhir Srivastava. This is called SSI robot, SSI robot, this is mantra robot, this is mantra robot, this is Sudhir Srivastava innovation, this is our Sudhir Srivastava, he was a cardiothoracic surgeon in America and he had 30 years of experience as a cardiac surgeon and all his hard earned money he has put to start this robot, this is called mantra robot and this is getting slowly slowly popular in india at least 10 they have the already launched the mantra robot and this is a, this is the mantra robot and here this is dr sudhri Sivasa, this is me and we have also tested this robot and it's very good and you can use this robot also this is very cheap only 4.5 cr means it is less than 1 million, means no 50, means half million is the cost. And this also has multiple arms, multiple arms and this is made in India robot. And this is great, it is also similar to the CMR and similar to the Hugo robot. And because it is in India, so you have the better access and the service. Because anything happens immediately within one hour they will repair it and you can get a better service. This is called SSI mantra, they have one SSI mudra, these are mantra and mudras are the Indian terms, Sanskrit terms and they are making this robot. So this is very good, I will take little forward first and this is their robot. After that you have the Google is building the robot with the Johnson & Johnson. So this is Google robot, it will be launched this year. In 2015 itself they have started building up and probably this year they will launch and once you can see the company like Google if they will come in the surgical robot, what will be the advancement because they are, they are now fixing all their AI, barred AI, they are fixing with the, their robot. So they will take their own command and verbal command also will be taken. After that Elon Musk is coming with the, this Neuralink surgical robot. In Neuralink surgical robot, whatever you will think it will do, you don't have to speak also. It will be connected with your brain, surgeon's brain and suppose you have some idea, then this idea will be translated to the robot. This is the Neuralink robot which is coming. So robotic technology is advancing in such a huge speed that without being robotic surgeon, you don't have any future. You have to become a robotic surgeon. Supportive robots are also available in other branch of the medicine. Like suppose someone has fainted on the airport, immediately a robot will come and it will examine the heart sound and respiratory sound and then it can give the a lot of treatment. Now internal locomotion robot has manufactured in which you have to do a colpotomy and drop it inside the abdomen of the patient 
and it will roam inside the abdomen a patient. Sandia National Laboratory in New Mexico, they have made one internal locomotion robot. It is just less than one dollar and it has a mounted with the camera, temperature, motion and micro tools. So you can put it inside the abdomen and it will roam inside the abdomen, go to tinea coli, cut the appendix and take it out. And you are seeing outside with camera sensor everything in your computer. Not only that, now there is a big advancement in robotic going on where we will operate on cell with the energy. Right now you are operating on the tissue with the instrument. In the future, you will operate on the cell with the energy. And how it is possible? By the help of biomolecular actuator. This is the biomolecular actuator which is invented. Here is a carbon nanotube. And there are RNA and DNA joints are there. And this you have to inject into the vein of the patient. And once you inject in the vein of the patient, it will roam into the abdominal cavity. And then with this biomolecular actuator, it can, it can find out the tissue for which it is programmed. And this carbon nanotube will implant over that tissue which you want to operate. Like suppose patient has prostate adenoma or breast adenoma or breast any ductal carcinoma. Then you will program it just like the just like this sleeper cell. Sleeper cell is a type of terrorist which you program and bomb them and they go and they bomb themselves. So same way this carbon nanotube will get implanted over this cancer tissue. And then it will take, it has a RNA and a DNA joint. So it will take the energy from this, this uh, uh, tissue itself. And it gives you the command outside. After that, anesthetize the patient because patient may get vasovagal shock. Anesthetize the patient, give a lot of analgesics and just by a pressure of the one keyboard button, it will explode. And the surgery is finished inside the abdomen. You don't have to cut to reach to the tissue. The carbon nanotube and biomolecular actuator will reach itself and get implanted over the tissue. And once it is energized, surgery is finished. It is done. So this technology is called carbon nanotube biomolecular actuators, biomolecular actuators with RNA nanorobots. So this technology is already patented and people are working, maybe within 20 years it will start. So this way robotic technology is developing a lot in the field. Of course, important of animal dissection is there in the robotic. So generally, we have the only institute in the India licensed to do the robotic also. And uh, we do the robotic animal lab with the research and this is CPSC, our certificate which is given. Uh, 2024 again, we have to renew it. So conclusion is that technology is always neutral. It is neither good nor evil. It is up to us that how we breathe in this technology. And we should apply with empathy and compassion to each and every patient. Robotic surgery is one example of such technology which may reduce the problems, which may reduce the complication and improve the benefit. But at what point benefit justify expense? That is the question mark. Because nowadays a lot of surgery is done by robotic where it is not required. But just to earn and just to return on the investment, we are pushing the patient for the expensive surgery. But unfortunately, the field of business is like that only, which we cannot help. Any technology, if it is new, it is expensive. Once upon a time, the mobile, even incoming, you were paying. And now, call is almost free. You are only paying for data. Am I right? So this is with every technology, once it is in the beginning, this is the problem. So I took my robotic surgery training from Harvard Medical School, Boston, USA. So here I have one video and that video explain the robot with human. So this video is not ours. This video I will just show you to see how the robot and human compete each other.
Thyroid surgery is possible, transuran, in which what is done that this lower lip will be separated from the mandible. Isko detach karte hain yahan se. Lower lip will be separated from mandible and will be brought here. Port directly go through that. I will show you, this is called transoral robotic surgery. This is for thyroid. Transoral robotic thyroidectomy and not only that not only that without that also it is done see here this is how you will do transoral so this you have to give incision can you see that after giving incision you will detach the mandible and here and then you will enter. See, this is this is the lower lip, and here will go what telescope, and these two are other ports. So, 11 millimeter, 1 5 millimeter, 1 5 millimeter. You got my point. So, three port will be introduced, and then from here telescope will go, and these two are the instrument will go. So, this is called transoral surgery, transoral thyroidectomy, and thyroid can be removed by robot. So, this is very good. It is 45 centimeter, but no problem because it doesn't use fulcrum, so liver effect will not come. It is better. And they have a software, that software control the movement according to the amount which you have introduced inside the abdomen. Because it doesn't work on liver action. That's why you don't need to multiple length of the instrument. Because software knows that how much is in, how much is out, that is called remote sensor. That remote sensor is sensing it. Whereas in laparoscopy, we have fulcrum effect. Lab robotic, you don't have fulcrum effect. Yes? What is the pressure for Generally, you do, initially 18 millimeter mercury pressure is required, but after that, once the space is created, generally there is no need of any pneumoperitoneum. Directly it can go. So, in axilla or in the thigh for seps, you need to distend it for transoral no need. Once you dissected that space, after that you can directly continue without any gas. Means pneumoperitoneum word is wrong here. Pneumo, neck you can say. Peritoneum means peritoneal cavity. Am I right? So, any other question? 
So I will request all of you that sooner or later you should must start it. Earlier you will start any technology, you will be better winner. If you will delay it, it will be difficult. I will not uh, suggest you to invest right now in robotics, but almost if you will see, look at surrounding to you, within 100 kilometer of your practice, you must have one robot. In the city where, and then you can take a privilege of using their robot for your patient. 